The Mongols Mongolian, Mongolkud, Mongolchud, M. T. T. are an East Central Asian ethnic group native to Mongolia and to China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. They also live as minorities in other regions of China e.g. Xinjiang, as well as in Russia. Mongolian people belonging to the Buryat and Kalmyk subgroups live predominantly in the Russian federal subjects of Buryatia and Kalmykia. The Mongols are bound together by a common heritage and ethnic identity. Their indigenous dialects are collectively known as the Mongolian language. The ancestors of the modern-day Mongols are referred to as Proto-Mongols. Definition Broadly defined, the term includes the Mongols proper also known as the Khalkha Mongols, Buryats, Orits, the Kalmyk people and the Southern Mongols. The latter comprises the Abaga Mongols, Abaganar, Aohans, Barans, Gorlos Mongols, Jalades, Jarud, Kishigten, Kukid, Mumyangan and Anagud. The designation, Mongol, briefly appeared in 8th century records of Tang China to describe a tribe of Shiwei. It resurfaced in the late 11th century during the Khitan-ruled Liao dynasty. After the fall of the Liao in 1125, the Kamig Mongols became a leading tribe on the Mongolian plateau. However, their wars with the Jurchen-ruled Jin dynasty and the Tatar confederation had weakened them. In the 13th century, the word Mongol grew into an umbrella term for a large group of Mongolic-speaking tribes united under the rule of Genghis Khan. Topic. History In various times Mongolic peoples have been equated with the Scythians, the Magog, and the Tungusic peoples. Based on Chinese historical texts the ancestry of the Mongolic peoples can be traced back to the Donghu, a nomadic confederation occupying eastern Mongolia and Manchuria. The identity of the Xiongnu is still debated today. Although some scholars maintain that they were proto-Mongols, they were more likely a multi-ethnic group of Mongolic and Turkic tribes. It has been suggested that the language of the Huns was related to the Hunu. The Donghu, however, can be much more easily labeled proto-Mongol since the Chinese histories trace only Mongolic tribes and kingdoms Shenbei and Wawan peoples from them, although some historical texts claim a mixed Zongnu donghu ancestry for some tribes e.g. the Khitan. Origin See Genetic History of East Asians In the Chinese classics The Donghu are mentioned by Sima Qian as already existing in Inner Mongolia north of Yan in 699–632 BCE along with the Shanrong. Mentions in the Yi Zhou Shu Lost Book of Zhou and the classic of mountains and seas indicate the Donghu were also active during the Shang dynasty 1600 to 1046 BCE. The Shenbei formed part of the Donghu confederation, but had earlier times of independence, as evidenced by a mention in the Guoyu Jin Yu Ba section, which states that during the reign of King Cheng of Zhou reigned 1042-1021 BCE they came to participate at a meeting of Zhou subject lords at Kiyong Qiyong now Kashan County but were only allowed to perform the fire ceremony under the supervision of Chu since they were not vassals by covenant. Zhu the Shenbei chieftain was appointed joint guardian of the ritual torch along with Shang Yi. These early Shenbei came from the nearby Zhukaigo culture 2200-1500 BCE in the Ordos Desert, where maternal DNA corresponds to the Mongol Dor people and the Tungusic Evenks. The Zhukaigo Shenbei part of the Ordos culture of Inner Mongolia and Northern Shaanxi had trade relations with the Shang. In the late 2nd century, the Han dynasty scholar Fu Qian, Fu Qian wrote in his commentary. 
Jik C. Jijia that Shanrong and Bidi are ancestors of the present day Shenbei. Again in Inner Mongolia, another closely connected core Mongolic Shenbei region was the Upper Shajiadian culture, 1000 to 600 BCE, where the Donghu Confederation was centered. After the Donghu were defeated by Zongnu king Modu Chanu, the Shenbei and Wawan survived as the main remnants of the confederation. Tadan Khan of the Wawan died 207 AD, was the ancestor of the Proto-Mongolic Kumo Shi. The Wawan are of the direct Donghu royal line and the new Book of Tang says that in 209 BCE, Modu Chanu defeated the Wawan instead of using the word Donghu. The Shenbei, however, were of the lateral Donghu line and had a somewhat separate identity, although they shared the same language with the Wawan. In 49 CE the Shenbei ruler Bianhei Khan, raided and defeated the Zongnu, killing 2000, after having received generous gifts from Emperor Guangwu of Han. The Shenbei reached their peak under Tanchuai Khan reigned 156 to 181, who expanded the vast, but short-lived, Shenbei state 93 to 234. Three prominent groups split from the Shenbei state as recorded by the Chinese histories, the Roran claimed by some to be the Pannonian Avars, the Khitan people and the Shiwei a subtribe called the Shiwei Mungu is held to be the origin of the Genghisid Mongols. Besides these three Shenbei groups, there were others such as the Morong, Duan and Tuba. Their culture was nomadic, their religion shamanism or Buddhism and their military strength formidable. There is still no direct evidence that the Roran spoke Mongolic languages, although most scholars agree that they were proto-Mongolic. The Khitan, however, had two scripts of their own and many Mongolic words are found in their half-deciphered writings. Geographically, the Tuba Shenbei ruled the southern part of Inner Mongolia and northern China. The Roran Yujiulu Shelin was the first to use the title Khagan in 402 ruled eastern Mongolia, western Mongolia, the northern part of Inner Mongolia and northern Mongolia. The Khitan were concentrated in eastern part of Inner Mongolia north of Korea and the Shiwei were located to the north of the Khitan. These tribes and kingdoms were soon overshadowed by the rise of the Turkic Khaganate in 555, the Uyghur Khaganate in 745 and the Yenisei Kyrgyz states in 840. The Tuba were eventually absorbed into China. The Roran fled west from the Gokturks and either disappeared into obscurity or, as some say, invaded Europe as the Avars under their Khan, Bayan I. Some Roran under Tatar Khan migrated east, founding the Tatar Confederation, who became part of the Shiwei. The Khitan, who were independent after their separation from the Kumo Shi of Wawan origin in 388, continued as a minor power in Manchuria until one of them, Ambagai (872–926), established the Liao Dynasty (907–1125) as Emperor Taizu of Liao. Topic. Era of the Mongol Empire and Northern Yuan The destruction of Uyghur Khaganate by the Kyrgyz resulted in the end of Turkic dominance in Mongolia. According to historians, Kyrgyz were not interested in assimilating newly acquired lands, instead, they controlled local tribes through various manaps tribal leader. The Khitans occupied the areas vacated by the Turkic Uyghurs bringing them under their control. The Yenisei Kyrgyz state was centered on Kakassia and they were expelled from Mongolia by the Khitans in 924. Beginning in the 10th century, the Khitans, under the leadership of Abaoji, prevailed in a several military campaigns against the Tang dynasty's border guards, and the Shi, Shiwei, and Jurchen nomadic groups. The Khitan fled west after being defeated by the Jurchens, later known as Manchu, and founded the Kara Kitai in eastern Kazakhstan. In 1218, Genghis Khan destroyed the Kara Kitai after which the Khitan passed into obscurity. 
With the expansion of the Mongol Empire, the Mongolic peoples settled over almost all Eurasia and carried on military campaigns from the Adriatic Sea to Indonesian Java Island and from Japan to Palestine Gaza. They simultaneously became padishas of Persia, emperors of China, and great khans of Mongolia, and one became Sultan of Egypt al -Adil Kitbuga. The Mongolic peoples of the Golden Horde established themselves to govern Russia by 1240. By 1279, they conquered the Song dynasty and brought all of China under control of the Yuan dynasty. With the breakup of the empire, the dispersed Mongolic peoples quickly adopted the mostly Turkic cultures surrounding them and were assimilated, forming parts of Azerbaijanis, Uzbeks, Karakalpaks, Tatars, Bashkirs, Turkmens, Uyghurs, Nogays, Kyrgyz, Kazakhs, Caucasus peoples, Iranian peoples and Mughals. Linguistic and cultural Persianization also began to be prominent in these territories. Some Mongols assimilated into the Yakuts after their migration to northern Siberia and about 30% of Yakut words have Mongol origin. However, most of the Yuan Mongols returned to Mongolia in 1368, retaining their language and culture. There were 250,000 Mongols in southern China and many Mongols were massacred by the rebel army. The survivors were trapped in southern China and eventually assimilated. The Dongxiangs, Bonans, Uyghur and Mongar people were invaded by Chinese Ming dynasty. After the fall of the Yuan dynasty in 1368, the Mongols continued to rule the northern Yuan dynasty in Mongolia homeland. However, the Orads began to challenge the eastern Mongolic peoples under the Borjigan monarchs in the late 14th century and Mongolia was divided into two parts, Western Mongolia Orits, and Eastern Mongolia Kalka, Inner Mongols, Barga, Buryats. The earliest written references to the plough in Middle Mongolian language sources appear towards the end of the 14th c. In 1434, Eastern Mongolian Taisun Khans (1433–1452), Prime Minister Western Mongolian Togun Taish reunited the Mongols after killing Eastern Mongolian another king Adai Korchan. Togun died in 1439 and his son Asen Teish became prime minister. Asen carried out successful policy for Mongolian unification and independence. The Ming Empire attempted to invade Mongolia in the 14 to 16 th centuries. However, the Ming Empire was defeated by the Orat, Southern Mongol, Eastern Mongol and United Mongolian armies. Asin's 30,000 cavalries defeated 500,000 Chinese soldiers in 1449. Within 18 months of his defeat of the titular Khan Taisun, in 1453, Asin himself took the title of Great Khan 1454 of the Great Yuan. The Khalkha emerged during the reign of Dayan Khan 1479 as one of the six Tumans of the Eastern Mongolic peoples. They quickly became the dominant Mongolic clan in Mongolia proper. He reunited the Mongols again. The Mongols voluntarily reunified during Eastern Mongolian Tuman Zasakt Khan rule 1558-1592 for the last time, the Mongol Empire united all Mongols before this. Eastern Mongolia was divided into three parts in the 17th century, Outer Mongolia Kalka, Inner Mongolia Inner Mongols, and the Buryat region in southern Siberia. The last Mongol Khagan was Ligdan in the early 17th century. He got into conflicts with the Manchus over the looting of Chinese cities, and managed to alienate most Mongol tribes. In 1618, Ligdan signed a treaty with the Ming dynasty to protect their northern border from the Manchus' attack in exchange for thousands of tales of silver. By the 1620s, only the Shahars remained under his rule. <laughs> Qing-era Mongols The Shahar army was defeated in 1625 and 1628 by the Inner Mongol and Manchu armies due to Ligdan's faulty tactics. 
The Qing forces secured their control over Inner Mongolia by 1635, and the army of the last Khan Ligdan moved to battle against Tibetan Gelugpa sect, Yellow Hat sect forces. The Gelugpa forces supported the Manchus, while Ligdan supported Kagyu sect, Red Hat sect of Tibetan Buddhism. Ligdan died in 1634 on his way to Tibet. By 1636, most Inner Mongolian nobles had submitted to the Qing dynasty founded by the Manchus. Inner Mongolian Tengus Noyan revolted against the Qing in the 1640s and the Khalkha battled to protect Sunud. Western Mongolian Orits and Eastern Mongolian Khalkhas vied for domination in Mongolia since the 15th century and this conflict weakened Mongolian strength. In 1688, Western Mongolian Dzungar Khanate's King Galdan Bashugtu attacked Khalkha after murder of his younger brother by Tashit Khan Chakandorj main or central Khalkha leader and the Khalkha Orat War began. Galdan threatened to kill Chakandorj and Zanabazar Javzandumba I, spiritual head of Khalkha but they escaped to Sunud Inner Mongolia. Many Khalkha nobles and folks fled to Inner Mongolia because of the war. Few Khalkhas fled to the Buryat region and Russia threatened to exterminate them if they did not submit, but many of them submitted to Galdan Bashugtu. In 1683 Galdan's armies reached Tashkent and the Syr Darya and crushed two armies of the Kazakhs. After that Galdan subjugated the Black Kyrgyz and ravaged the Fergana Valley. From 1685 Galdan's forces aggressively pushed the Kazakhs. While his general Rabton took Taras, and his main force forced the Kazakhs to migrate westwards. In 1687, he besieged the city of Turkestan. Under the leadership of Abul Kher Khan, the Kazakhs won major victories over the Dzungars at the Balinti River in 1726, and at the Battle of Anrake in 1729. The Khalkha eventually submitted to Qing rule in 1691 by Zanabazar's decision, thus bringing all of today's Mongolia under the rule of the Qing dynasty but Khalkha de facto remained under the rule of Galdan Bashugtu Khan until 1696. The Mongol Orats Code a treaty of alliance against foreign invasion between the Orats and Khalkhas was signed in 1640, however, the Mongols could not unite against foreign invasions. Chakandorj fought against Russian invasion of Outer Mongolia until 1688 and stopped Russian invasion of Khoskhal province. Zanabazar struggled to bring together the Orits and Khalkhas before the war. Galdan Bashugtu sent his army to liberate Inner Mongolia after defeating the Khalkhas army and called Inner Mongolian nobles to fight for Mongolian independence. Some Inner Mongolian nobles, Tibetans, Kumul Khanate and some Mogulistan's nobles supported his war against the Manchus, however, Inner Mongolian nobles did not battle against the Qing. There were three Khans in Khalkha and Zasakt Khan Shar Western Khalkha leader was Galdan's ally. Setsan Khan Eastern Khalkha leader did not engage in this conflict. While Galdan was fighting in eastern Mongolia, his nephew Savinravdan seized the Dzungarian throne in 1689 and this event made Galdan impossible to fight against the Qing Empire. The Russian and Qing empires supported his action because this coup weakened western Mongolian strength. Galdan Bashugtu's army was defeated by the outnumbering Qing army in 1696 and he died in 1697. The Mongols who fled to the Buryat region and Inner Mongolia returned after the war. Some Khalkhas mixed with the Buryats. The Buryats fought against Russian invasion since the 1620s and thousands of Buryats were massacred. The Buryat region was formally annexed to Russia by treaties in 1689 and 1727, when the territories on both the sides of Lake Baikal were separated from Mongolia. In 1689 the Treaty of Nerchinsk established the northern border of Manchuria north of the present line. The Russians retained Trans-Baikalia between Lake Baikal and the Argun River north of Mongolia. 
The Treaty of Kayakta along with the Treaty of Nerchinsk, regulated the relations between Imperial Russia and the Qing Empire until the mid-19th century. It established the northern border of Mongolia. Oka Buryats revolted in 1767 and Russia completely conquered the Buryat region in the late 18th century. Russia and Qing were rival empires until the early 20th century, however, both empires carried out united policy against Central Asians. The Qing Empire conquered Upper Mongolia or the Orats Koshit Khanate in the 1720s and 80,000 people were killed. By that period, Upper Mongolian population reached 200,000. The Dzungar Khanate conquered by the Qing dynasty in 1755-1758 because of their leaders' and military commanders' conflicts. Some scholars estimate that about 80% of the Dzungar population were destroyed by a combination of warfare and disease during the Qing conquest of the Dzungar Khanate in 1755-1758. Mark Levine, a historian whose recent research interests focus on genocide, has stated that the extermination of the Dzungars was "...arguably the 18th century genocide par excellence." The Dzungar population reached 600,000 in 1755. About 200,000 to 250,000 Orits migrated from western Mongolia to Volga River in 1607 and established the Kalmyk Khanate. The Torgats were led by their Taishi, Hu Orlog. Russia was concerned about their attack, but the Kalmyks became Russian ally, and a treaty to protect southern Russian border was signed between the Kalmyk Khanate and Russia. In 1724, the Kalmyks came under control of Russia. By the early 18th century, there were approximately 300 minus 350,000 Kalmyks and 15 million Russians. The Tsardom of Russia gradually chipped away at the autonomy of the Kalmyk Khanate. These policies, for instance, encouraged the establishment of Russian and German settlements on pastures the Kalmyks used to roam and feed their livestock. In addition, the Tsarist government imposed a council on the Kalmyk Khan, thereby diluting his authority, while continuing to expect the Kalmyk Khan to provide cavalry units to fight on behalf of Russia. The Russian Orthodox Church, by contrast, pressured Buddhist Kalmyks to adopt Orthodoxy. In January 1771, approximately 200,000 Kalmyks began the migration from their pastures on the left bank of the Volga River to Dzungaria, Western Mongolia, through the territories of their Bashkir and Kazakh enemies. The last Kalmyk Khan Ubashi led the migration to restore Mongolian independence. Ubashi Khan sent his 30,000 cavalries to the Russo-Turkish War in 1768-1769 to gain weapon before the migration. The Empress Catherine the Great ordered the Russian army, Bashkirs and Kazakhs to exterminate all migrants and the Empress abolished the Kalmyk Khanate. The Kyrgyz attacked them near Balkash Lake. About 100,000 to 150,000 Kalmyks who settled on the west bank of the Volga River could not cross the river because the river did not freeze in the winter of 1771 and Catherine the Great executed influential nobles of them. After seven months of travel, only one-third of the original group reached Dzungaria, Balkash Lake, western border of the Qing Empire. The Qing Empire transmigrated the Kalmyks to five different areas to prevent their revolt and influential leaders of the Kalmyks died soon killed by the Manchus. Russia states that Buryasha voluntarily merged with Russia in 1659 due to Mongolian oppression and the Kalmyks voluntarily accepted Russian rule in 1609 but only Georgia voluntarily accepted Russian rule. In the early 20th century, the late Qing government encouraged Han Chinese colonization of Mongolian lands under the name of New Policies or New Administration. Xinjiang. As a result, some Mongol leaders especially those of Outer Mongolia decided to seek Mongolian independence. After the Xinhai Revolution, the Mongolian Revolution on 30 November 1911 in Outer Mongolia ended over 200-year rule of the Qing dynasty. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Post Qing Era. With the independence of Outer Mongolia, the Mongolian army controlled Khalkha and Khovd regions modern-day UVs, Khovd, and Bayan Olgi provinces, but northern Xinjiang the Altai and Ili regions of the Qing Empire, Upper Mongolia, Barga and Inner Mongolia came under control of the newly formed Republic of China. On February 2, 1913 the Bogod Khanate of Mongolia sent Mongolian cavalries to liberate Inner Mongolia from China. Russia refused to sell weapons to the Bogod Khanate, and the Russian Tsar, Nicholas II, referred to it as Mongolian imperialism. Additionally, the United Kingdom urged Russia to abolish Mongolian independence as it was concerned that if Mongolians gain independence, then Central Asians will revolt. 10,000 Khalkha and Inner Mongolian cavalries about 3,500 Inner Mongols defeated 70,000 Chinese soldiers and controlled almost all of Inner Mongolia. However, the Mongolian army retreated due to lack of weapons in 1914. 400 Mongol soldiers and 3,795 Chinese soldiers died in this war. The Khalkhas, Khovd Orits, Buryats, Dzungarian Orits, Upper Mongols, Barga Mongols, most Inner Mongolian and some Tuvan leaders sent statements to support Bogod Khan's call of Mongolian reunification. In reality however, most of them were too prudent or irresolute to attempt joining the Bogod Khan regime. Russia encouraged Mongolia to become an autonomous region of China in 1914. Mongolia lost Barga, Dzungaria, Tuva, Upper Mongolia and Inner Mongolia in the 1915 Treaty of Kayakta. In October 1919, the Republic of China occupied Mongolia after the suspicious deaths of Mongolian patriotic nobles. On 3 February 1921 the White Russian Army, led by Baron Ungern and mainly consisting of Mongolian volunteer cavalries, and Buryat and Tatar Cossacks, liberated the Mongolian capital. Baron Ungern's purpose was to find allies to defeat the Soviet Union. The statement of reunification of Mongolia was adopted by Mongolian revolutionist leaders in 1921. The Soviet, however, considered Mongolia to be Chinese territory in 1924 during secret meeting with the Republic of China. However, the Soviets officially recognized Mongolian independence in 1945 but carried out various policies political, economic and cultural against Mongolia until its fall in 1991 to prevent pan-Mongolism and other irredentist movements. On 10 April 1932 Mongolians revolted against the government's new policy and Soviets. The government and Soviet soldiers defeated the rebels in October. The Buryats started to migrate to Mongolia in the 1900s due to Russian oppression. Joseph Stalin's regime stopped the migration in 1930 and started a campaign of ethnic cleansing against newcomers and Mongolians. During the Stalinist repressions in Mongolia almost all adult Buryat men and 22-33,000 Mongols 3-5% of the total population, common citizens, monks, pan-Mongolists, nationalists, patriots, hundreds military officers, nobles, intellectuals and elite people were shot dead under Soviet orders. Some authors also offer much higher estimates, up to 100,000 victims. Around the late 1930s the Mongolian People's Republic had an overall population of about 700,000 to 900,000 people. By 1939, Soviet said, We repressed too many people, the population of Mongolia is only hundred thousands. Proportion of victims in relation to the population of the country is much higher than the corresponding figures of the Great Purge in the Soviet Union. The Manchukuo 1932 to 1945 puppet state of the Empire of Japan 1868 to 1947 invaded Barga and some part of Inner Mongolia with Japanese help. 
The Mongolian army advanced to the Great Wall of China during the Soviet-Japanese War of 1945 Mongolian name, Liberation War of 1945. Japan forced Inner Mongolian and Barga people to fight against Mongolians but they surrendered to Mongolians and started to fight against their Japanese and Manchu allies. Marshal Korlugin Chibalsan called Inner Mongolians and Xinjiang Orits to migrate to Mongolia during the war but the Soviet army blocked Inner Mongolian migrants' way. It was a part of Pan-Mongolian plan and few Orits and Inner Mongols Huchids, Bargas, Tumeds, about 800 Uzumchins arrived. Inner Mongolian leaders carried out active policy to merge Inner Mongolia with Mongolia since 1911. They founded the Inner Mongolian Army in 1929 but the Inner Mongolian Army disbanded after ending World War II. The Japanese Empire supported Pan-Mongolism since the 1910s but there have never been active relations between Mongolia and Imperial Japan due to Russian resistance. Inner Mongolian nominally independent Mungjong State 1936 to 1945 was established with support of Japan in 1936 also some Buryat and Inner Mongol nobles founded Pan-Mongolist government with support of Japan in 1919. The Inner Mongols established the short-lived Republic of Inner Mongolia in 1945. Another part of Chibalsan's plan was to merge Inner Mongolia and Dzungaria with Mongolia. By 1945, Chinese Communist leader Mao Zedong requested the Soviets to stop Pan-Mongolism because China lost its control over Inner Mongolia and without Inner Mongolian support the Communists were unable to defeat Japan and Kuomintang. Mongolia and Soviet supported Xinjiang Uyghurs and Kazakh separatist movement in the 1930-1940s. By 1945, Soviet refused to support them after its alliance with the Communist Party of China and Mongolia interrupted its relations with the separatists under pressure. Xinjiang Orat's militant groups operated together the Turkic peoples but the Orats did not have the leading role due to their small population. Basmachis or Turkic and Tajik militants fought to liberate Central Asia, Soviet Central Asia until 1942. On February 2, 1913 the Treaty of Friendship and Alliance between the government of Mongolia and Tibet was signed. Mongolian agents and Bogod Khan disrupted Soviet secret operations in Tibet to change its regime in the 1920s. On October 27, 1961, the United Nations recognized Mongolian independence and granted the nation full membership in the organization. The Tsardom of Russia, Russian Empire, Soviet Union, capitalist and communist China performed many genocide actions against the Mongols assimilate, reduce the population, extinguish the language, culture, tradition, history, religion and ethnic identity. Peter the Great said, The headwaters of the Yenisei River must be Russian land. Russian Empire sent the Kalmyks and Buryats to war to reduce the populations World War I and other wars, Soviet scientists attempted to convince the Kalmyks and Buryats that they're not the Mongols during the 20th century demongolization policy. 35,000 Buryats were killed during the rebellion of 1927 and around one-third of Buryat population in Russia died in the 1900s to 1950s. 10,000 Buryats of the Buryat Mongol Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic were massacred by Stalin's order in the 1930s. In 1919 the Buryats established a small theocratic Balagad state in Kizhenginsky district of Russia and the Buryats state fell in 1926. In 1958, the name, Mongol, was removed from the name of the Buryat Mongol Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic. On the 22nd of January 1922 Mongolia proposed to migrate the Kalmyks during the Kalmykian famine but Bolshevik Russia refused 0.71 minus 72,000 93,000, around half of the population Kalmyks died during the Russian famine of 1921-22. 
The Kalmyks revolted against Soviet Union in 1926, 1930 and 1942-1943 In 1913, Nicholas II, Tsar of Russia, said, "...we need to prevent from Volga Tatars. But the Kalmyks are more dangerous than them because they are the Mongols so send them to war to reduce the population." On 23 April 1923 Joseph Stalin, communist leader of Russia, said, "...we are carrying out wrong policy on the Kalmyks who related to the Mongols, our policy is too peaceful." In March 1927, Soviet deported 20,000 Kalmyks to Siberia, Tundra and Karelia. The Kalmyks founded Sovereign Republic of Orat Kalmyk on the 22nd of March 1930. The Orat state had a small army and 200 Kalmyk soldiers defeated 1,700 Soviet soldiers in Dervid province of Kalmykia but the Orat state destroyed by the Soviet army in 1930. Kalmykian nationalists and pan-Mongolists attempted to migrate Kalmyks to Mongolia in the 1920s. Mongolia suggested to migrate the Soviet Union's Mongols to Mongolia in the 1920s but Russia refused the suggest. Stalin deported all Kalmyks to Siberia in 1943 and around half of 97 Kalmyk people deported to Siberia died before being allowed to return home in 1957. The government of the Soviet Union forbade teaching Kalmyk language during the deportation. The Kalmyk's main purpose was to migrate to Mongolia, and many Kalmyks joined the German army. Marshal Korlugin Chibalsan attempted to migrate the deportees to Mongolia, and he met with them in Siberia during his visit to Russia. Under the law of the Russian Federation of April 26, 1991, on rehabilitation of exiled peoples. Repressions against Kalmyks and other peoples were qualified as an act of genocide. After the end of World War II, the Chinese Civil War resumed between the Chinese nationalists Kuomintang, led by Chiang Kai-shek, and the Chinese Communist Party, led by Mao Zedong. In December 1949, Chiang evacuated his government to Taiwan. Hundred thousands Inner Mongols were massacred during the Cultural Revolution in the 1960s and China forbade Mongol traditions, celebrations and the teaching of Mongolic languages during the revolution. In Inner Mongolia, some 790,000 people were persecuted. Approximately one million Inner Mongols were killed during the 20th century. In 1960 Chinese newspaper wrote that Han Chinese ethnic identity must be Chinese minorities' ethnic identity. China Mongolia relations were tense from the 1960s to the 1980s as a result of Sino Soviet split, and there were several border conflicts during the period. Cross border movement of Mongols was therefore hindered. On 3 October 2002 the Ministry of Foreign Affairs announced that Taiwan recognizes Mongolia as an independent country, although no legislative actions were taken to address concerns over its constitutional claims to Mongolia. Offices established to support Taipei's claims over Outer Mongolia, such as the Mongolian and Tibetan Affairs Commission, lie dormant. Again Buryat Okrug and Ust Orta Buryat Okrugs merged with Irkutska Oblast and Chita Oblast in 2008 despite Buryat's resistance. Small-scale protests occurred in Inner Mongolia in 2011. The Inner Mongolian People's Party is a member of the Unrepresented Nations and People's Organization and its leaders are attempting to establish sovereign state or merge Inner Mongolia with Mongolia. Topic. Language Mongolian is the official national language of Mongolia, where it is spoken by nearly 2.8 million people 2010 estimate, and the official provincial language of China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, where there are at least 4.1 million ethnic Mongols. Across the whole of China, the language is spoken by roughly half of the country's 5.8 million ethnic Mongols 2005 estimate. 
However, the exact number of Mongolian speakers in China is unknown, as there is no data available on the language proficiency of that country's citizens. The use of Mongolian in China, specifically in Inner Mongolia, has witnessed periods of decline and revival over the last few hundred years. The language experienced a decline during the late Qing period, a revival between 1947 and 1965, a second decline between 1966 and 1976, a second revival between 1977 and 1992, and a third decline between 1995 and 2012. However, in spite of the decline of the Mongolian language in some of Inner Mongolia's urban areas and educational spheres, the ethnic identity of the urbanized Chinese-speaking Mongols is most likely going to survive due to the presence of urban ethnic communities. The multilingual situation in Inner Mongolia does not appear to obstruct efforts by ethnic Mongols to preserve their language. Although an unknown number of Mongols in China, such as the Tumes, may have completely or partially lost the ability to speak their language, they are still registered as ethnic Mongols and continue to identify themselves as ethnic Mongols. The children of inter-ethnic Mongol Chinese marriages also claim to be and are registered as ethnic Mongols. The specific origin of the Mongolic languages and associated tribes is unclear. Linguists have traditionally proposed a link to the Tungusic and Turkic language families, included alongside Mongolic in the broader group of Altaic languages, though this remains controversial. Today the Mongolian peoples speak at least one of several Mongolic languages including Mongolian, Buryat, Orat, Dongshang, Tu, Bonin, Hazaragi, and Aimaq. Additionally, many Mongols speak either Russian or Mandarin Chinese as languages of inter-ethnic communication. Religion The original religion of the Mongolic peoples was shamanism. The Shenbei came in contact with Confucianism and Taoism but eventually adopted Buddhism. However, the Shenbais in Mongolia and Rurans followed a form of shamanism. In the 5th century the Buddhist monk Dharmapriya was proclaimed state teacher of the Roran Khaganate and given 3,000 families and some Roran nobles became Buddhists. In 511 the Roran Duluaubadufa Khan sent Hong Zan to the Tuba court with a pearl-encrusted statue of the Buddha as a gift. The Tuba Shenbei and Khitans were mostly Buddhists, although they still retained their original shamanism. The Tuba had a sacrificial castle to the west of their capital where ceremonies to spirits took place. Wooden statues of the spirits were erected on top of this sacrificial castle. One ritual involved seven princes with milk offerings who ascended the stairs with twenty female shamans and offered prayers, sprinkling the statues with the sacred milk. The Khitan had their holiest shrine on Mount Muya where portraits of their earliest ancestor Kasho Kagan, his wife Kedan and eight sons were kept in two temples. Mongolic peoples were also exposed to Zoroastrianism, Manichaeism, Nestorianism, Eastern Orthodoxy and Islam from the West. The Mongolic peoples, in particular the Borjigan, had their holiest shrine on Mount Burkhan Khaldun where their ancestor Borte Chono Blue Wolf, and Gu Meryl Beautiful Doe, had given birth to them. Genghis Khan usually fasted, prayed and meditated on this mountain before his campaigns. As a young man he had thanked the mountain for saving his life and prayed at the foot of the mountain sprinkling offerings and bowing nine times to the east with his belt around his neck and his hat held at his chest. Genghis Khan kept a close watch on the Mongolic supreme shaman Kokochu Teb who sometimes conflicted with his authority. Later the imperial cult of Genghis Khan centered on the eight white gurs and nine white banners in Ordos grew into a highly organized indigenous religion with scriptures in the Mongolian script. 
Indigenous moral precepts of the Mongolic peoples were enshrined in oral wisdom sayings now collected in several volumes, the Anda Blood Brother system and ancient texts such as the Chinggis on Bileg wisdom of Genghis and Oyan Tulkar key of intelligence. These moral precepts were expressed in poetic form and mainly involved truthfulness, fidelity, help in hardship, unity, self-control, fortitude, veneration of nature, veneration of the state and veneration of parents. In 1254 Monk Khan organized a formal religious debate in which William of Rubric took part between Christians, Muslims and Buddhists in Karakoram, a cosmopolitan city of many religions. The Mongolic Empire was known for its religious tolerance, but had a special leaning towards Buddhism and was sympathetic towards Christianity while still worshipping Tengri. The Mongolic leader Abaka Khan sent a delegation of 13 to 16 to the Second Council of Lyon 1274, which created a great stir, particularly when their leader Zaganus underwent a public baptism. A joint crusade was announced in line with the Franco-Mongol alliance but did not materialize because Pope Gregory X died in 1276. Yabalaha III and Rabban Bar Sama c. 1220-1294 were famous Mongolic Nestorian Christians. The Karaites in central Mongolia were Christian. In Istanbul the Church of St. Mary of the Mongols stands as a reminder of the Byzantine-Mongol alliance. The Western Khanates, however, eventually adopted Islam under Burke and Ghazan and the Turkic languages because of its commercial importance, although allegiance to the Great Khan and limited use of the Mongolic languages can be seen even in the 1330s. In 1521 the first Mughal emperor Babur took part in a military banner milk sprinkling ceremony in the Chagatai Khanate where the Mongolian language was still used. al adil Kitbuga reigned 1294-1296, a Mongol sultan of Egypt, and the half-Mongol and Nasir Muhammad reigned till 1341 built the madrasa of al-Nasir Muhammad in Cairo, Egypt. And Nasir's Mongol mother was Ashlan bint Shakte. The Mongolic nobility during the Yuan dynasty studied Confucianism, built Confucian temples, including Beijing Confucius Temple, and translated Confucian works into Mongolic, but mainly followed the Sakya school of Tibetan Buddhism under Phags Pa Lama. The general populace still practiced shamanism. Dongshang and Bonin Mongols adopted Islam, as did Moghal speaking peoples in Afghanistan. In the 1576, the Gelug school of Tibetan Buddhism became the state religion of the Mongolia. The Red Hat school of Tibetan Buddhism coexisted with the Gelug Yellow Hat school, which was founded by the half Mongol Jasangkapa. Shamanism was absorbed into the state religion while being marginalized in its purer forms, later only surviving in far northern Mongolia. Monks were some of the leading intellectuals in Mongolia, responsible for much of the literature and art of the pre-modern period. Many Buddhist philosophical works lost in Tibet and elsewhere are preserved in older and purer form in Mongolian ancient texts e.g. the Mongol Kanjur. Zanabazar (1635–1723), Zaya Pandita (1599–1662), and Danzenravja (1803–1856) are among the most famous Mongol holy men. The fourth Dalai Lama Yantan Gyatso (1589–1617), a Mongol himself, is recognized as the only non-Tibetan Dalai Lama, although the current 14th Dalai Lama is of Mongolic Mongar extraction. The name is a combination of the Mongolian word Dali meaning ocean and the Tibetan word Bla Ma meaning guru, teacher, mentor. One, many Buryats became Orthodox Christians due to the Russian expansion. During the socialist period religion was officially banned, although it was practiced in clandestine circles. Today, a sizable proportion of Mongolic peoples are atheist or agnostic. 
In the most recent census in Mongolia, almost 40% of the population reported as being atheist, while the majority religion was Tibetan Buddhism, with 53%. Having survived suppression by the communists, Buddhism among the eastern, northern, southern and western Mongols is today primarily of the Gelugpa Yellow Hat sect school of Tibetan Buddhism. There is a strong shamanistic influence in the Gelugpa sect among the Mongols. <laughs> <laughs> Military They battled against the most powerful armies and warriors in Eurasia. The beating of the kettle and smoke signals were signs for the start of battle. One battle formation that they used consisted of five squadrons or units. The typical squadrons were divided by ranks. The first two ranks were in the front. These warriors had the heaviest armor and weapons. The back three ranks broke out between the front ranks and attacked first with their arrows. The forces simply kept their space from the enemy and killed them with arrow fire, during which time, archers did not aim at a specific target, but shot their arrows at a high path into a set killing zone or target area. Mongolics also took hold of engineers from the defeated armies. They made engineers a permanent part of their army, so that their weapons and machinery were complex and efficient. Topic. Kinship and family life The traditional Mongol family was patriarchal, patrilineal and patrilocal. Wives were brought for each of the sons, while daughters were married off to other clans. Wife-taking clans stood in a relation of inferiority to wife-giving clans. Thus wife-giving clans were considered elder or bigger in relation to wife-taking clans, who were considered younger or smaller. This distinction, symbolized in terms of elder and younger or bigger and smaller, was carried into the clan and family as well, and all members of a lineage were terminologically distinguished by generation and age, with senior superior to junior. In the traditional Mongolian family, each son received a part of the family herd as he married, with the elder son receiving more than the younger son. The youngest son would remain in the parental tent caring for his parents, and after their death he would inherit the parental tent in addition to his own part of the herd. This inheritance system was mandated by law codes such as the Yasa, created by Genghis Khan. Likewise, each son inherited a part of the family's camping lands and pastures, with the elder son receiving more than the younger son. The eldest son inherited the farthest camping lands and pastures, and each son in turn inherited camping lands and pastures closer to the family tent until the youngest son inherited the camping lands and pastures immediately surrounding the family tent. Family units would often remain near each other and in close cooperation, though extended families would inevitably break up after a few generations. It is probable that the Yasa simply put into written law the principles of customary law. It is apparent that in many cases, for example in family instructions, the Yasa tacitly accepted the principles of customary law and avoided any interference with them. For example, Ryasinovsky said that killing the man or the woman in case of adultery is a good illustration. Yasa permitted the institutions of polygamy and concubinage so characteristic of southerly nomadic peoples. Children born of concubines were legitimate. Seniority of children derived their status from their mother. Eldest son received more than the youngest after the death of father but the latter inherited the household of the father. Children of concubines also received a share in the inheritance, in accordance with the instructions of their father or with custom. After the family, the next largest social units were the subclan and clan. These units were derived from groups claiming patrilineal descent from a common ancestor, ranked in order of seniority the conical clan. 
By the Chinggisid era this ranking was symbolically expressed at formal feasts, in which tribal chieftains were seated and received particular portions of the slaughtered animal according to their status. The lineage structure of Central Asia had three different modes. It was organized on the basis of genealogical distance, or the proximity of individuals to one another on a graph of kinship, generational distance, or the rank of generation in relation to a common ancestor, and birth order, the rank of brothers in relation to each another. The paternal descent lines were collaterally ranked according to the birth of their founders, and were thus considered senior and junior to each other. Of the various collateral patrilines, the senior in order of descent from the founding ancestor, the line of eldest sons, was the most noble. In the steppe, no one had his exact equal, everyone found his place in a system of collaterally ranked lines of descent from a common ancestor. It was according to this idiom of superiority and inferiority of lineages derived from birth order that legal claims to superior rank were couched. The Mongol kinship is one of a particular patrilineal type classed as Omaha, in which relatives are grouped together under separate terms that crosscut generations, age, and even sexual difference. Thus, a man's father's sister's children, his sister's children, and his daughter's children are all called by another term. A further attribute is strict terminological differentiation of siblings according to seniority. The division of Mongolian society into senior elite lineages and subordinate junior lineages was waning by the 20th century. During the 1920s the communist regime was established. The remnants of the Mongolian aristocracy fought alongside the Japanese and against Chinese, Soviets and Communist Mongols during World War II, but were defeated. The anthropologist Herbert Harold Vreeland visited three Mongol communities in 1920 and published a highly detailed book with the results of his fieldwork, Mongol Community and Kinship Structure. Historical population Geographic distribution Today, the majority of Mongols live in the modern state of Mongolia, China mainly Inner Mongolia and Xinjiang, Russia, Kyrgyzstan and Afghanistan. The differentiation between tribes and peoples ethnic groups is handled differently depending on the country. The Tumd, Shahar, Ordos, Barga, Altai Uriankai, Buryats, Dorbad, Dorvad, Dorbd, Torgud, Dariganga, Uzumchan or Uzumchan, Bayads, Khotan, Mayangad, Mingad, Eljigan, Zakchan, Darkhad, and Olats or Olds or Olats are all considered as tribes of the Mongols. Subgroups The Eastern Mongols are mainly concentrated in Mongolia, including the Khalkha, Eljigan Khalkha, Darkhad, Sartul Khalkha, and Dariganga Khalkha. The Buryats are mainly concentrated in their homeland, the Buryat Republic, a federal subject of Russia. They are the major northern subgroup of the Mongols. The Barga Mongols are mainly concentrated in Inner Mongolia, China, along with the Buryats and Hamnagan. The Southern or Inner Mongols mainly are concentrated in Inner Mongolia, China. They comprise the Abaga Mongols, Abaganar, Auhan, Asud, Barans, Shahar, Dervd, Gorlos, Karchan, Hishigten, Korchan, Huchid, Jalade, Jarud, Mumyangan, Naiman, Southern Mongols, Anagud, Ordos, Sunud, Tumd, Urad, and Uzumchan. The Western Mongols or Orits are mainly concentrated in Western Mongolia. 184,000 Kalmyks 2010. Kalmykia, Russia 205,000 Mongolian Orits 2010. 140,000 Orits 2010. Xinjiang region, China 90,000 Upper Mongols 2010. Qinghai region, China
The Koshits are the major subgroup of the Upper Mongols, along with the Koros, Khalkha and Torgats. 12,000 Sert Kulmix Zungharian descents 2012. Kyrgyzstan. Religion, Sunni Islam, Altai Uriankai, Batud, Bayad, Chantu, Koros, Dervid, Koshit, Koid, Khotan, Myangad, Olats, Sert Kulmix mainly Olats, Torgat, Zakshin. Kulmix. Batud, Bazava, Koros, Dervid, Koid, Olats, Torgat. Upper Mongolian Orits Koros, Koshit, Torgat. Topic: Mongolia. In modern-day Mongolia, Mongols make up approximately 95% of the population, with the largest ethnic group being Khalkha Mongols, followed by Buryats, both belonging to the Eastern Mongolic peoples. They are followed by Orits, who belong to the Western Mongolic peoples. Mongolian ethnic groups Baran, Batud, Barga, Bayad, Buryat Selinj Shahar, Chantu, Darkhad, Dariganga Dorbit Orat, Eljigan, Kalka, Hamnagan, Karchan, Koid, Korchan, Hotogoid, Khotan, Huchid, Myangad, Olats, Sartul Torgat, Tumd, Uzumchan, Zakshan China The 2010 census of the People's Republic of China counted more than 7 million people of various Mongolic groups. The 1992 census of China counted only 3.6 million ethnic Mongols. The 2010 census counted roughly 5.8 million ethnic Mongols, 621,500 Dongxiangs, 289,565 Mongers, 132,000 Doors, 20,074 Baoans, and 14,370 Uyghurs. Most of them live in the Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, followed by Liaoning. Small numbers can also be found in provinces near those two. There were 669,972 Mongols in Liaoning in 2011, making up 11.52% of Mongols in China. The closest Mongol area to the sea is the Dabao Mongol Ethnic Township in Fengcheng, Liaoning. With 8,460 Mongols 37.4% of the township population, it is located 40 kilometers 25 miles from the North Korean border and 65 kilometers 40 miles from Korea Bay of the Yellow Sea. Another contender for closest Mongol area to the sea would be Erdaowanzi Mongol Ethnic Township Erdaowanzi Mengu Zhushang in Jianchang County, Liaoning. With 5,011 Mongols 20.7% of the township population, it is located around 65 kilometers 40 miles from the Bohai Sea. Other peoples speaking Mongolic languages are the Dor, Saguo Arig, Monger people, Dongxiangs, Bonans, Sichuan Mongols and eastern part of the Uyghur people. Those do not officially count as part of the Mongol ethnicity, but are recognized as ethnic groups of their own. The Mongols lost their contact with the Mongers, Bonan, Dongxiangs, Yunnan Mongols since the fall of the Yuan dynasty. Mongolian scientists and journalists met with the Dongxiangs and Yunnan Mongols in the 2000s. Inner Mongolia Southern Mongols, Barga, Buryat, Dorbat Orat, Khalkha, Dzungar people, Esni Torgat. Xinjiang Province Altai Uriankai, Shahar, Koshit, Olats, Torgat, Zakshin. Qinghai Province, Upper Mongols, Koros, Khalkha Mongols, Koshit, Torgat. Russia Two Mongolic ethnic groups are present in Russia. The 2010 census found 461,410 Buryats and 183,400 Kalmyks. Topic: 
elsewhere. Smaller numbers of Mongolic peoples exist in Western Europe and North America. Some of the more notable communities exist in South Korea, the United States, the Czech Republic and the United Kingdom. Gallery Data tables equals equals see also